There we go. Okay. It's Dina. Yeah, Dina, Alaska uh, Northern Lights Retreat, 2019. Like um, pleasure to be here. We are going to be a little chaotic here. We have lunch coming up where we're doing a taco bar, and I have several things going in the quick cooker. This is the start of a quick cooker theme show that you can run different ways. My first one's going to be for my uh, host appreciation and preferred customer event. It will be at my home. So some of this chaos um, will be mischief managed because I can do things at the house. I also have lots of the ingredients um, that either will be extras in my fridge or I've pulled out of my fridge their staples that I have in my pantry, things like that. So because we're at a retreat, I'm up in Alaska, I'm not taking anything home with me to Colorado, obviously. I have done what I call Dina Mods, and that is we've used some of the stuff that we've had on hand. The ingredients aren't exactly perfect. You can take any of these components that you want to put in a pressure cooker show of your own, but the main thing about the pressure cooker show is you want to make people feel very, very comfortable with using the Pamper Chef um, pressure cooker, know a little bit about the facts, advantages, and benefits, the FABs that are listed, and just get people comfortable so they're going to get that quick cooker out of the box. Now, if people already own a different kind of quick cooker, I am doing this as a take and make show where they are gonna get a list of ingredients, they're gonna bring their own quick cooker if they have one, they will be using my Pamper Chef tools to prepare the ingredients and then they can take their ingredients home with them. But at that show, I'm gonna be doing boiled eggs, I'm going to be doing the proofing of the bread, and I'm also gonna be doing a cheesecake. I today have prepared um, some fish to poach to show that component and we will take that from start to finish in this segment as well as um, a green bean red potato Greek salad. Mm -hmm. So you can do whatever you want at your shows but the thing that you want to do is have some added value. It will be very inexpensive to do the um, eggs and the bread and depending on your fish, um, we had some locally caught cod that we're using today for some fish tacos, but you can do whatever it is. Um, it was not especially expensive to do the uh, Greek salad until I started adding extras to it. Mm -hmm. um, but you can, you can key it to your needs, but you definitely want people to get their hands on the tools that you have when they're preparing their things to take home. And you also want to share with them um, that the accessory kit can be used in their quick cooker. So most of theirs don't come with anything like that. It's unique to the Pampered Chef. I've looked out there on the market, our ceramic bowl, our lifter, our riser. Those are all great things that they want to add on even if they've had one. So we're going to start over at the um, bread that's proofing. And we're going to walk with me over here. We've got a lot of directors. And this would be a great multi-consultant event for you to do for bingo or for... Um, for, um, you know, a big multi hostess with lots of consultants at a hall kind of thing where each consultant did one thing and kind of talked about it. They played some games, somebody else showed something. It would be perfect for something like that. Also, with these things, you can film yourself and add it to a virtual show. So you can offer this as a virtual show as well. So there's lots of different ways to market it. I have been talking to a lot of my friends. Some of them were early adopters with an Instapot and just dove in and got to it and they probably know about more about pressure cooking than I do. I bought one and it was scorching everything. I was so frustrated with it. I kind of set it aside until I got my Pampered Chef accessory pack and then I started using the rack in there and it made all the difference and so now I'm happy with the one I already had as well as my Pampered Chef one and I find sometimes with dinners I want two of them going mm 
You know, I'm using them for a lot of different things. So then I have people who bought it and they have it taken out of the box because they're afraid. And then I have some friends who are thinking about it and watching other people and they kind of want to do it, but they haven't even talked themselves into buying one or getting one as a gift yet. So what we have done here, and one of the features and benefits with Pampered Chef um, it's quick cooker and there's handles on the base which makes it super easy to pick it up and move it if it was up here it would be harder just with women having it lower because our center of gravity is lower mm -hmm. makes it easier for us to move around so this is our bread it's been proofing in here for a half an hour and it's starting to rise and it's still nice and warm and steamy in here we are going to take the bread and we're going to put it in the oven and the oven's been set to 375 and we're going to bake it. So um, that's our bread. We have some honey and some butter there. If I wanted to, I could make a honey butter in the manual food processor and show another product with this. But if you have bread baking when they arrive and then you show this step, there's nothing about nothing like homemade bread mm -hmm. getting everybody excited and in a great mood to be at a Pampered Chef show. So super easy to mix together this ingredients, this multi-grain. You can also think when you want to add and make it a 10 grain cereal, getting a nice 10 grain breakfast cereal like from Bob's Red Mill and using that instead of the oats will give you a nice multi-grain cereal um, bread. And so there's lots of different things you can do with that. You can add molasses instead of the honey and just show some of the different tips that you can do with this. If somebody wants to up the um, fiber, then of course they can start taking away some of the processed flour in it if they want to add more texture. But they're going to get a drier bread. An easy way to handle that is to add a little more fat. And that makes it um, a nice little balance. So we're going to go ahead and um, have somebody, and they recommend that you normally would use our little um, grips or the nice um, silicone mitts to pull things out but because this was in the proofing mode it's not hot you can handle these pieces nobody's gonna get burnt so that's one of the things so we can go ahead this has been proofing for a half an hour and we can go ahead and just put this piece in the oven and we'll get that up later and we'll look and see I think it bakes for 30 minutes 35 minutes okay so next we're gonna go to the boiled eggs yes yes please. And then we will go on to poaching the fish. So, um, so I'm gonna leave this up here. One of the most important things that you need to understand about pressure cooking, no matter what you're making, you need a minimum of one cup of water in here to create the steam or the pressure cooker feature will not come on. Whether it's chicken broth, vegetable broth, Whatever kind of liquid you're doing in here, like say you're cooking mashed potatoes and you want to cook them um, in milk, you need a minimum of one cup. You will have to adjust your potatoes or drain the milk out of there and then put whatever you need back in to mash the potatoes. But a minimum of one cup of liquid is key to all pressure cooking. So um, this is the rack. This is the lifting device for the ceramic dish, but I've used it for several things now. Um, you know, just in here with artichokes and stuff to get them setting up the way I wanted, um, and that works great. Now, I do have to admit on the eggs that in Colorado where I live, I have to cook them for 15 minutes. I think it was recommended 12, and I automatically put them in for 15 minutes. Things take longer to cook at altitude. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought, oh, 15 minutes. So they might be a little overdone because I think they recommend 12. There's all kinds of Pamper Chef videos that you can get people connected to if they buy a quick cooker from you. Make sure that you send them the resources. Um, this was something I just kind of automatically did, but um, I have learned when I look at the front of the device, if I turn this over kind of on the corner and then turn it, it falls into place and closes very easily. You kind of have to stare at it, but um, 
there is some things right here that don't line up any other way. But once you get the fact that you put it on there at the kitty corner, then it just turns and closes. If you have it wrong, it won't close. Another one of the um, FABs, the features, advantages, and benefits, is that our steam release is at the back of the device, so you're never putting your hands into that hot steam and potentially burning yourself when you push this. But one of the things you need to be mindful if you plug it in underneath your upper cabinets that you're going to create like a steam shower and that you need to make sure that you pull this out and have it shooting away from the wall and away from your cupboards. You don't want it delaminating the front of your cupboards or creating a whole bunch of steam underneath your covers. But cupboards, but it is very nice to have that. So when this is ready, this little red button that you can't see unless you're looking down on it, um, when it's not ready or it's not hot, pops up. And you can also see the large screen from a distance across the room. That button or the front of the screen starts um, lighting up. One of the things about the screen that you need to know is there's a manual count up feature that lets you know after it's done, how long it's been sitting there done, and it automatically shifts into the warming mode. So it is going to continue to cook it unless you release it. So this might be something, if you know you're gonna walk away from it, you might be using the slow cooker feature of this because you want it, if you're gonna be gone out of the house, um, instead of the quick cooking, you might want to put it into the slow cooker mode. So that's there for you. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the other modes in just a minute. So we're going to move down here where we have our next quicker ready and we have our um, eggs. That one has been really steamed. Okay, so we are going to release the steam. We know that this is ready because our little red button has popped up and this is kind of sitting at high profile. When the steam is released, it will pop down and, and it will be ready go. to open, okay? So this is called a manual steam release. So why would you wanna do a manual steam release as opposed to letting the machine do it? Well, it continues to cook. So like with artichokes, I might have them in there for 25 minutes, but I want them to do a manual steam release because I know I really want them to cook more like 35 minutes and as it's doing its little thing, it's gonna to continue to cook, okay? Or if, in the case of the eggs, I didn't want them to overcook and get that gray coating around the yolk, I wanna do a manual release after 12 minutes and do an ice bath to stop the cooking. We didn't do that, I have no idea what we're gonna get, and I already admitted that I did it on Colorado cooking time, which is 15. So we have our six eggs in here. Most of our water has evaporated, and then this will be warm. I'm gonna to wanna to use those microwave grits, grips or some kind of pot holder to pick these up because this is like touching a hot pan. Mm -hmm. Now, the beautiful thing about the Pampered Chef Quick Cooker is it doesn't get burning hot to the touch. On the outside, it stays cool really easily here. Um, I think it's so much easier to wash than my stove. <laughs> and so I have found that this is like a deep fry pan, you know, and I can keep all the mess when I'm, I'm browning my ground beef and everything in here and my sauce in here, I can put the lid on it. Um, one of my lids from my cookware set fits beautifully on the top of it. So if I don't want to use the stretch one, I want to have one that has a little pool, I just pulled out um, a lid from my, my set here. So these are in here for you. Um, I'm gonna pull this out. We're gonna go give them a quick douse. It makes them easy to peel as well. Um, you don't have to worry about their fresh eggs or old eggs. It's just for some reason the way they cook in the pressure cooker, they are easy to, um, they are easy to peel. So we are going to get um, the fish poaching and the cheesecake cooking in here, and then we'll go over and complete our Greek salad. 
So I'm going to grab those things. I kind of have a, a fish taco set up right here. You could also do this as a walking taco, a walking tip fish taco, where you crunch up the Doritos and then you add all your toppings into the bag and people can socialize. Those are really fun little parties. <laughs> Okay, so I have our cod set up right here, and I've added some spices, some lemon, and some onion to this. We are going to add some additional water. Can um, we grab this uh, insert in here? We know it's not hot. We still are going to need a little more water in here. Grab someone's water okay. bottle. Yeah, <laughs> the water bottle will work just fine. Look, this one's been hanging out. Okay, and if I wanted to, like when I'm cooking artichokes or I'm cooking anything like this, if I want to add some garlic to the water, if I want to add the herb de Provence to my water when I'm cooking my artichokes, um, if you cook shrimp really quick and you add the herb de Provence to the water, it's absolutely amazing for a fish tip. And one of the things that people really are uncomfortable with is usually buying fish. And any tips that you can give people, especially non-locals, <laughs> on how to buy fish. And don't just say, oh, well, my neighbor just catches it and gives it to me. Um, <laughs> if you know, you know that, that fish, if it's really smelly, it's probably not that fresh fish. You know, nice fresh fish doesn't have that big smell to it. It's as it gets older, it gets fishier smelling. So one of the things I do at the market is I smell the fish. I also look, is it nice and firm? What does the liquid that's coming off of it look like? My dad was a marine biologist. He brought home fresh fish, abalone, scallops when I was growing up. And so I was spoiled. And I'd go to the market and I'd stare at the food and go, so one of the things I'd find out about the market is, do they fly it in daily? Where does it come from? How many days old? And I would rather have frozen fish that I know is flash frozen on the boat than buying fish that has been frozen, defrosted, set behind a counter, and is a week old, essentially. So don't be afraid of the frozen fish. A lot of times you get a, a nice result with that. Believe it or not, Costco and Sam's, because of the quantity of food that they sell, a lot of times their fish is flown in fresh daily, you know, and they turn it around very, very quickly. Safeway also has a good fish department. So sometimes it's where you buy it that you're going to feel more comfortable. Yep comfortable to ring that little bell and ask the butcher um, or who's ever in charge of the fish department some of those key questions and you'll feel really confident with that. Um, usually with fish tacos you want to sear the fish very quickly or fry your fish um, but this particular time we are going to do a poached fish and poaching fish is really good if you're going to be doing like a fish salad um, uh, anything where you want to keep the moisture in there and you don't necessarily need to have that browning, crunchy um, coating on the outside. So this is more of a poaching set, setting right here. And it makes it super, super easy. And I'm sorry, our cord um, is not going to reach. So I'm going to do um, a little protection on this chair right here. I'm going to use the quick cooker case. And if you don't know about these, these are found on your paperwork supply list. And I did buy them for my children for Christmas gifts because they were taking their Instapot full of chili and different things over to people's houses. And they were like, Mom, it's really, you know, kind of hot and what do I do in the car? And I said, oh, well, let me get you one of those cases. So maybe you could have a special thing each month with your hostess that has the highest party and gets a quick cooker that you will buy it for her or...
do whatever depending on how big. Maybe you say, when you have a $1,250 party, I'll give you this for free. There's different ways that you can market it. You can also build it into team contests for your team if they're unaware of these cases as well. I think they're super nice. I hope that they will become available to um, customers. I bought my second one for my non pampered Chef Instapot because I store everything in my Instapot together. Everything fits. Even my little cookbook, everything I throw in that case yep. together, it keeps it nice and corralled when I need it. It's all there together. I even have my big soup ladle in there and my big mix and chop, everything, my little micro grips that I need is in there. It makes it super easy for me to take it to a shelf. So we are going to seal this up and got this case right here. We now put it on the corner, kind of like that. We can quickly turn that and it's closed. So what I'm going to be doing is, as soon as I plug it in, we're going to see the panel light up. I am going to put it on um, custom. No, I'm going to put it on, and then I'm going to turn these until it gets to this setting right here that says fish and seafood. And this is the shortest cook time. I made a little, little note of what all the cook times are. And a lot of times I know when I'm cooking something else and I want to cook it for approximately the same amount of time, I just look for the auto setting that I know cooks for 15 minutes. I go to that setting and we're good to go. You're going to learn a lot about this as you go along. I'm still learning. You know, we haven't had it that long. So, but I do use it all the time as um, just in a searing mode as a frying pan. Okay, so I'm going to plug this back in right here, and I do put it in the case. It's not going to melt. Again, it just gives you a little bit of layer, and this cleans very well. I have put it in the dishwasher, and I have also washed it in the washing machine. So I just like to keep my stuff for my shows nice and clean, and anything gets a spot on it. The other thing I've done is I've used the press and seal wrap. When I'm just like cooking and I'm using it as a fry pan, I just kind of make a little collar pressed on there. It's not getting that hot. And then when I clean it, I just pull it off and I put another one on. Makes it super quick for cleanup. So I have just got this turned on and I see this blue button come on here and I just keep twisting this little button till we get to the seafood. Oops, I passed it. So I'm going back the other direction. There we go, it's on. And this is just for three minutes. So it's gonna take about 10 minutes to come up to pressure. It's gonna cook for three minutes. And then I'm gonna release the steam manually because I don't want it to cook more than that. Okay. Just a note, it looks on the screen, it looks like it's blinking, but that's just a video and electronic screens thing. It doesn't, okay. it does, it's not actually blinking. <laughs> okay, now I push the start and you think maybe nothing's going on, but really what's going on right here is it's coming up to pressure. As soon as it is up to pressure, the time is going to come on and the steam was going to cook it. And we, you know, we, I didn't say this, but we're using the ceramic insert um, with the lifter device. So we're going to go over, we're going to start another pressure cooker and we are going to make our cheesecake. So what I've really done today is I've shown some basics like the proofing, the fish setting, the salad's going to show another setting, the dessert setting is going to be used for the cheesecake. Um, so we just kind of showed some of the different things like that. Again, as I said, this would be a great collaborative show where each consultant is in charge of something different and you all have different tables of uh, customers, past hostesses, yeah. things like that. So it might not necessarily be your theme show that you do all the time in your home, but you know, for a special added value show, I think it's gonna get you the bookings that you need to get started. And you can take elements and turn them into a much simpler show. See what people like the best and then continue on with those items. So over to the cheesecake. And I wanna thank my happy helpers right here. All right, we are going to remove the green beans and the red potatoes that were in this one right here. 
And this particular recipe, we, we let it stay in here too long. But what you want to do is you want to just quick cook the green beans um, on the sear with it open. You'll put them in the ceramic bowl and then you will put the silicone steamer on there and they will continue to cook and they'll stay nice and green that way. Um, I, I admit I cooked them with the red potatoes just because we had a lot of stuff go, going on to put this together. Um, and so I didn't do it that way. I have it in the insert. It is going to be hot. So I'm going to pull this up right here. We are going to drain that really quickly um, and put it with our other ingredients that we're going to throw in the salad chopping bowl to make our salad. So just going to do, obviously having your colander set would be wonderful. Anyhow, we're just going to throw these over here and we will get to that in just a second and show off our new January product, yes. which is the salad chopping bowl. Okay, so we're going to give this a quick little rinse because cheesecake really needs um, to be cooked with steam. Have you ever had dry cheesecake that you almost kind of choked on going down? Mm -hmm. And it cracks. And it cracks. And chicken can be the same way. And that's because they aren't cooked in a nice steamy environment. I was so excited at Christmas. I make a um, basically figgy pudding. You know that song? Yes. Mm -hmm. Figgy pudding. Okay, I won't sing for you. Not good. <laughs> but figgy pudding is a steamed bread pudding. So think zucchini bread, pumpkin bread, those kinds of things, nut bread. And sometimes they can be dry. Well, they figured early on that if you cooked them in a closed environment in a steam pan or a can with a lot of foil on it and clamped down really tight, in an oven where you put a pan of water at the bottom of it, that it made a nice, steamy, it's almost like a different texture. And so figgy pudding is a plum pudding that has plums and stuff in it. Well, my family, um, we've lived in California a long time and we had an abundance of persimmons and a lot a lot of people eat persimmons but some people know about them but they're a beautiful orange color and when they're fully ripe you want to think peach mango baby food <laughs> it has a very silky texture that almost looks like they've been pureed okay so when they're nice and cooked and you use, you use that in, and you can add nuts or not add nuts, um, raisins. This year I did cranberries, dried cranberries or dried cherries in there are really good. And you make this bread, and then I cooked it in the quick cooker because I could get that nice steamy environment. So I made it in the um, ceramic in there. And I wanted it to look like it was a bunt pan, so I used my jigger from my bar set that's stainless steel, and I stuck that right in the middle, and it made it into a little bunt pan. And I'll post that picture for you because it really turned out pretty. I did a, a whipped cream hard sauce for the top of it, and it was absolutely delicious. So that steamy environment that we're going to use here, so I... Um, cooked it in the ceramic insert with the um, silicone lid on it. And I had the steam in here. It turned out perfect. It, normally I have to cook it for over an hour and I cooked it for 20 minutes. And so I was very, very happy with, with that result. So we're going to go ahead and put our um, stand in here. And I think I left that. Oh, here it is. Here's one right here. So we're going to put our stand in. How much liquid are we going to use? One cup. one cup. We're going to use one cup of liquid. So I'm just going to use water, but if I wanted to infuse it with vanilla or brandy or anything like that, I can totally infuse my liquid with an additional flavor. Um, any of you who um, do uh, some of the uh, essential oils, a little orange oil in here would be fantastic as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our cheesecake in here. We're going to shut this right here. And again, we're going to just dial away until we get all the way down to the bottom. And 
I could have gone backwards from where I was at and it would have ended up that quicker. Um, but I put it on the dessert setting right here, which is going to cook our cheesecake for 40 minutes. If I wanted to, I can um, customize that and drop it down a little bit. Um, you know, so they're saying 20 do, minutes. Do you cover your cheesecakes? Um, I didn't. I didn't. When I did cover my um, figgy pudding thing that I did, I did have some condensation, mm -hmm. which I just patted with a paper towel and it took it off. And again, you want that moist texture. It didn't affect the outside crust or anything, but I am afraid with the cheesecake, I wouldn't be able to pat it dry. Okay. So, um, um, yeah. So we, we just have our regular cheesecake recipe. I did cheat today. There is an additional um, strawberry sauce that you can make on the sear mm -hmm. feature, and you can make the sauce in front of them. I bought a really nice pie cherry thing to go on the top of the cheesecake just because we had all this other stuff going on. Okay, so um, I'm going to just push start on that, and it's going to get going. I'm going to read the thing right right. Um, after I leave here and I reserve the right to fix this on the video. So we're going to go over, we're going to make the little Greek salad here. Um, does anybody, would you, would somebody wash that? We can just kind of do the egg now um, right here and you can see that it's easy to pull um, and it looks like we could have um, used a little less time. And these are great. A lot of people um, want to um, add a little um, more protein. So I would have just done the 12 minutes here in Alaska and do the manual release, and you won't have that gray on there. But a lot of times it's nice to see what happens and kind of learn. Don't worry about any of the little failures. This isn't going to affect the flavor, um, you know. I, and it wouldn't matter um, in a double egg by the time I put my mustard in there. You, could, you can't tell. So, but, you know, as I said, in Colorado, it takes a little bit longer to cook for our beans. And so I usually add an extra 10 minutes for the beans in Colorado for the altitude. I add three extra minutes for my hard-boiled eggs. Okay, we're moving over here to our fun new product. And um, I know that April brought me the bread knife. Salad 
full chopping shelves. Okay, so then you put the little cutting board. This is just the cutting board. And we're going to put that in there. And it says to do it three quarters of the way full so that you can actually move it. Of course, I have it too full. I can see on there. So I'm going to take out about a quarter of the ingredients right here right now. Okay. And then I have plenty left that if anybody wants to try this themselves, they'll be able to come over and um, have a little station style show where they can do it. So I'm going to flip it over and take off the outside holding bowl. I do recommend the grooved cutting board for this in case you have any juicies. So this is when you have your options. Um, I have a good salad dressing here and I have some herbs to add to that. Um, you can, of course, use both of the knives so that you can talk about the different cutlery. And you can add that in, that's a whole nother show. Again, there's so many different products that we're gonna use for the preparation with our Instapots. It's gonna give you a nice variety. So I can decide if I want this a chunky texture by skipping every other slicing area. Okay, if I want it chunky, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly lift up and turn it a little bit, and then I'm going to go back in and skip again, and again, deciding on what kind of texture I want, I'm going to do this a couple of times. If I want it nice big pieces and I kind of started out, then I'm only going to do it two or three times. If I want it chopped up like I did broccoli salad in here, you know, with the red onions, and you add the coleslaw and the bacon and the sunflower seeds, you know that recipe, right? Um, I did it about six times, and it chopped my broccoli and my onions up into nice little pieces. So just going to do it just one last time. We're going to throw it in the bowl and put the dressing on it and then get it set up for anybody who wants to come play with it and do this themselves. So that should be all chopped up. And again, as you do more and more with this, you're gonna find out what works for what recipes. I think you're gonna see a lot of online videos. So that's kind of the essence. We will show um, some pictures later with the cheesecake being done and the bread being done. And I'll post my uh, persimmon pudding online and I'll send a picture to you guys as well. Um, but have fun with it and share with each other. And the more chatter you have going on about these pressure cookers, use Pinterest. And don't just use um, the company's images for anywhere, okay? That will send your orders back to the company. You need to go to your personal website, pin the images from your personal website. That creates the hot link back to your order. Super, super important. When you pin other ideas from other consultants, their link stays with that image and you are sending your customers to that other consultant. Um, there also is a tried it feature where you take your picture and you add it to somebody, maybe they're a food blogger or whatever, I tried your recipe, there's ways that then you can add your picture, and if people click on your picture, it can take them back to your website. So, you know, make sure you know what you're doing with Pinterest. I have years and years of bad pens to get rid of off my Pinterest board, but all those people who look at my boards on Pinterest, and I have a business Pinterest, so I can do ads, I can do a lot of different things with Pinterest. I have 23,000 followers. I have had up to 55,000 followers. Guess what's at the top right underneath my picture? My website. My website. I get orders from people all around the country. I say, how'd you find me? Oh, I saw you were a Pamper Check consultant. I liked your white blouse board. And I'm like, oh, they were looking at my fashion board? I used to teach fashion. <laughs> I have a bachelor's. I'm a, I'm a home economist. So I, I kind of have all these different genres that I teach in. But um, people will say, oh, I, I liked your turquoise board, or I liked your card board, or I liked your Christmas decorating board, or whatever. And I saw you were a Pamper Chuck consultant. And I, I went to your website and I ordered from you. So don't be afraid when people order from you to say thank you and ask them how they found you. 
because then you'll invest that time in that area. Thanks a lot for joining us. We have the tacos. I think our fish will probably be done here in a second, and we're ready for that manual release.